this is how I set up my S25 Ultra. Let me show you how to do it. Now I bet you guys want to know how to make this beautiful looking setup. It does look quite nice, doesn't it? Very like, kind of got like a dark theme to it though, a little bit of color splashed in there. Unlike the previous video that I made about a very similar looking setup where it was kind of just all black and gray and white and it was just a bit of a darker version of this. So if you're interested in that, go check out that video, which is linked below. Now, before we get into the ins and outs and step by step of exactly how to make this setup, there's a few important things that I need to tell you beforehand. So first and foremost, if you want any of the wallpapers in this video, they're all linked below on my website, press link below and that's where you can get them from if you like them. I quite like them, so I recommend you go get them. Secondly, if you don't want to do the step by step in Nova Launcher where you have to kind of fiddle with all the settings to get this exact setup, I am also providing a link in the description below for the Nova backup file. So you can just install the backup file and it does all the settings for you as long as you have the right apps downloaded and installed beforehand. And then thirdly, what apps do you need? This is obviously very important. So first app that you 100% need is Nova Launcher. This is a free app. It is the launcher itself and it's the most important part of this setup. You can also download Nova Launcher Prime. It's the paid version of Nova Launcher, which adds a few extra features. There's only one feature that I bring up in this video that you might want, but it's not even a, an important or even relevant really part to this setup. So you don't need Nova Launcher Prime if you don't have it already. And I will point out when you need it anyway in the video so you can decide for yourself later on. The next app you need, this one's very important, is iDark OS. This is the icon pack that we're gonna use so that you can get those iOS looking icons in this setup. The final thing you're gonna need is KWGT and KWGT Pro, depending on whether you do end up using the KWGT widgets. You might not necessarily need either of these apps, but if you wanna have a wider selection of widgets, iOS looking like widgets to choose from, then I recommend downloading both of these apps. KWGT Pro is paid, whereas KWGT isn't. And then when it comes to the widgets that you need, I've chosen from four iOS widget apps that you can use two of which use KWGT and two of which don't. So the ones that use KWGT is iOS 17 widgets for KWGT and iOS widgets. Some of these apps are paid for by the way, so if you can go for the free ones first and then see later on what you decide, then that's what I would recommend doing. And then the non-KWGT ones, which I definitely recommend that you get, are both called color widgets. One's called color widgets only and one's called color widgets iWidgets. Anyway, links all below in the description for these apps. And that's kind of all the apps that you need. Now, first things first is open Nova Launcher and press get started. When it comes to these settings, you can kind of just skip your way through them and we'll come back to them later. Open Nova Launcher again once you've done that. Hold on the home screen, go into settings. This one's important, you wanna do this now. Scroll down to where it says set default launcher and select Nova Launcher. This will make our job easier if you do this now rather than wait until later. Then just clear the home screen by holding the apps and pressing remove. Make sure you have fully cleared it. Right, now once you've done all that, hold onto the home screen until it gets some more options and press the settings button. Once you've done that, go into home screen, which is the top option. And then the first thing that you wanna do is set the icon size to 160%. Then toggle off labels, so the toggle is switched off. Go into the desktop grid and set the vertical grid to seven with the horizontal grid to four and have subgrid positioning ticked. Next, head into padding and go large by large just by sliding both sliders all the way to the end. We'll skip dock for now, just looking at the rest of them. Under search, where it says search bar placement, choose none. For wallpaper scrolling, choose off. For widget corner radius, make sure that's set to 16. For the page indicator, choose the three circles. I like to choose the one where the selected circle is a little bit bigger than the rest. And then for everything else, leave it the same. Now scroll back up to the dock, which is positioned underneath padding. Press on it and it will open a bunch of new settings. First off, make sure dock is enabled with the toggle for enable switched on. And then where it says match desktop size, just make sure you have that ticked. Just like the home screen for label, make sure the toggle is switched off. And then for padding, make sure it is large by large. When it comes to dock background, make sure it is switched on and then press on it to reveal more settings. Tick padding and then for each corner, make sure it is set as round. 
Once you set every single corner to round, set the percentage to 60% for each one. Now head into color, scroll all the way to the bottom of color, make sure the transparency is set to 30% and then choose the bottom gray color, which is third from the right. If you want the code for this, that's 313030. You can use this code if you want to put the color code in manually. For the dock icons, make sure it is set to four and for everything else, leave it as is. Now head back into the main settings and go into app drawer. For app drawer, make sure you tick match desktop size, make sure labels are toggled off and that the drawer app grid is set to seven by four, where seven is the vertical alignment and four is the horizontal alignment. For colors, scroll all the way to the bottom and choose the gray color, which is third from the left and then set the transparency to 35%. Make sure app drawer style is set to vertical. Transition animation is slide up. Search bar placement is set to the top. Tab bar placement set as none. And then you can choose whether or not you want to have frequently used apps ticked. I prefer not to, but you can have that ticked on. And for opening the app drawer, make sure it is set to swipe. This is the easiest, most convenient way to gain access to your app drawer. Now for me personally, I like to have it enabled where show keyboard is instantly on once you swipe into the app drawer so I can instantly search for the app that I want rather than start scrolling through or open the app drawer and then go into the search bar. This way it's just a little bit quicker, but that's up to you. And if you want, you can tick fast scroll bar to have a scroll bar that you can quickly slide up and down to quickly navigate the app drawer. Now head up to search bar placement, press that little settings icon, make sure your transparency is set to 100%, make sure wireframe and shadow is ticked, go into color, scroll all the way to the bottom and select the gray icon that's third from the left and set the transparency to 0%. Then once you've done that, choose the magnifying glass, well that's the one I chose, up to you obviously. And now you can head into folders where we can make it so that the folders have a similar layout and look to an iPhone. So to do that, just as we've done before, match the desktop size when it comes to the icon size. So make sure you tick that. Ensure labels are switched off for a cleaner look. For colors, scroll all the way to the bottom and choose the gray color, which is second from the left. This time with transparency set to 0%. For mode, choose immersive to get that iPhone look and make sure card background is enabled. For corner radius, ensure it is 26 dp. And then you can choose whether or not you want to show the folder name. I just prefer the cleaner look of not having the folder name shown, so I have that disabled. Same reason I don't have any of the labels for the apps enabled because I just prefer the look of not having labels, but that's all up to you, obviously. And then, so that it's just like an iPhone, make sure the grid is set to three by three and scroll direction horizontal. Now head into folder icon appearance at the bottom of the screen. Now we can't get one that looks quite like the iPhone, but this is the second cleanest one in my opinion, or the cleanest look that you can do with Nova Launcher. So this is the one I go for. Choose line, which is at the bottom right of the icon layout selected here. And then for background shape, choose rounded square. Untick clip to background and outline. And if match folder window color is also ticked, make sure that's unticked as well. And then for colors, head into colors, scroll all the way to the bottom and choose the gray color on the far left and set the transparency to zero. And that's it for folder icon appearance. Now head back to the main settings and go into search. Make sure the mode is set to immersive rather than window. I have limit apps to one row ticked on with Nova micro results ticked for basically more searching capabilities. So you could say put unit conversions or put quick little math equations or Google searches or whatnot. And then for everything else, I left it as is with web suggestions by Google and just left everything as it originally was. Now heading back into the main settings, go into gestures and inputs. Swipe up should be set to app drawer from what we've done already. And if you have this already for your Samsung, then swipe down should be set to expand notifications. This just makes it easier. Now you have the option to add more gestures and more tasks that can be done just by doing these gestures. Now, obviously this is up to you. There's nothing preset that I've done. A common one I often do if I don't have it so that the keyboard shows up the second I go into the app drawer is set the double tap gesture to Nova Search. But problem with access to all of these gestures is you do need to pay for the prime version of Nova Launcher, but I don't really think it's necessary. But if you do have that, then could be worth adding some customization there. Now for look and feel. This is a really important part. So first thing you want to head into is icon style and go into icon theme and select iDark OS. This is the icon pack app that we downloaded before. 
make sure auto gen is ticked and then for the icon shape choose rounded square for reshape legacy icons make sure it is set to always and make sure adaptive icon animations is ticked as well as shadow being ticked for everything else i left it as it originally was now head into notification badges and make sure notification badges is ticked and enabled you might have to go into settings to ensure certain permissions are set on once you've done that i like to have it in the top right corner and have it set to large and other than that that's all that needs to be done for notifications now the final thing that you need to do before we start actually setting up the home screen is install google discover now to do that first thing you've got to do is head into your web browser probably chrome and search up nova google companion Search that up, press on the link at the top, the first link, scroll down to where it says download Nova Google Companion, press it, press download, you should get an option to open it towards the top, press open and then press install at the bottom and that should be done. Now head into the settings of Nova Launcher, scroll down to where it says integrations, scroll down to where it says theme, set it to dark, make sure the feed provider is selected as Google Discover and then make sure the transition is set as overlay, that's just a nicer transition. And then you have the options to check how fit it is and whether you can restart it or not. That's if you ever have any problems with Nova Google Companion, just press that restart thing because sometimes it can be a little bit buggy. Anyway, now I'm just going to set up the home screen. This is the way I set it up in my dock. I had phone, messenger, app store, which is Google Play, obviously, and the camera app. And then I just started setting up the rest of the apps. I've gone for this sort of layout where it's a two by two grid of apps with some widgets taking over most of the screen. So for the widgets, go into the color widgets app. There's obviously a lot of options you can choose from. In this color widgets app, you can choose from one of the ones I told you about at the start of the video. I chose, first one I chose was the clock. And then you just select the one you want choose the size you can choose the transparency certain settings and then just add the widget to home screen and then you can just do that on repeat now i've told you about a number of ios widget apps there's two color widget apps they're called color widget both of them and they allow you to just directly add the widget that they've created onto your home screen the other options are kwgt widgets to add those you add the widgets from kwgt first just by holding on the home screen and then going widgets and then scrolling down to kwgt choose the two by two widgets for kwgt press on a widget once you've added it to the home screen and then you can choose which ios widget you want from there but in this example here, I'm just using the widgets from one of the two color widget apps that I told you about at the start. This notes one allows you to add your own notes to it and then add it to home screen. Now, that's basically it for kind of creating this setup. But essentially by downloading all these widget apps, you get a wider selection of widgets because there's not that many in these color widget apps, especially ones that look a lot like the iPhone one if those are the ones that you want. The final thing that I did was just add those apps in the top left corner to complete that home screen setup. And that's kind of the final look. Swipe up into the app drawer, you get the keyboard shown straight away because we, oh, well, I had that ticked on, that's up to you. And if you want to hide certain apps from the app drawer, you just hold them and press hide if you don't like the way that they look because not all apps seem to fit into the icon pack. Most do, but sometimes it doesn't and it tries to compensate for it. And that's basically it. And you want to add another home screen, hold on the home screen and press add on the right. And that's kind of it. And that's how you do the setup. So now your phone's looking a little bit interesting, different than most Android phones that you would have seen out and about. And remember, if you want any of those wallpapers that I've been using, they're all linked below in the description. And reminder, if you want the kind of darker version of the setup, the more black and gray and just kind of more darker, mysterious, I don't know, whatever, darker look to it. I made a whole video on that four years ago. And if you're interested in that, that video is also linked in the description below. Other than that, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Please, 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 please subscribe if you haven't already and give this video a like and comment for the sake of the algorithm. Check out my Instagram at the Rami on the Gar for a behind the scenes perspective. And that's basically it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Salam.